blocks. So those are the sort of big ones. There's some other tasks that are not, no less important, but uh, can happen quicker. Uh, for example, there's a, a piece of the KU band um, uh, radio system that is malfunctioned. Right now, we're sort of um, one failure away to losing some of the key capabilities that the KU band gives us. And, uh, and so we'll, we'll probably be replacing a transmitter and receiver controller box for that system. And there's also some talk of a, uh, a part of the system that gets the power from the solar arrays into the batteries, one piece of key piece of equipment that regu helps regulate that uh, function uh, called an SSU, sequential shunting unit, I believe. And uh, that is looking like it needs to be repaired as well. So lots of little tasks and some big ones. And uh, it's really exciting for me to think about the opportunity to go out there and help fix the space station outside. Or to go out, out again. Out you again. got uh, yeah. about 18 hours worth of experience on spacewalks three years ago. Right. Uh, so, yeah, looking forward to go another crack at it? Very, very much so. I'm looking forward. I remember distinctly the, the feeling of first time I opened the hatch and looking down at the planet and for some reason even though you're looking out the window inside the space shuttle when when you open the hatch and it's just the bubble of your helmet it's a different feel to that same view and I remember thinking wow holy cow I'm really here and uh, it probably was only a half a second that I kind of froze and was t awestruck by the situation but it felt like it was probably a minute or two that I was gawking before you know fortunately I, I moved on and quickly got about my work before Dave Wolf could reach behind and smack me in the head and say, come on, new guy, let's go. Push you out the door. <laughs> Space Station is getting supplies from Earth delivered by a small fleet of unhuman cargo ships these days. And there are a few of them, several of them, that are coming up during your time on board. Uh, tell me about these different ships that you expect to see uh, either arrive or depart or be there, uh, including the, the new American commercial cargo ships. Right. So... Right away, the, the, the next SpaceX vehicle is planned to launch in early March, which is before we launch. So by the plan, there'll be a, it'll be a couple days after we arrive that the space, SpaceX vehicle undocks. So we'll be assisting with the final cargo loading of, of that vehicle as well. And I, incidentally, I was at uh, Kennedy Space Center just a week or two ago where they were putting the final touches on assembling that vehicle and, and uh, so I had the opportunity to peek my head in and see, see the ship here on the ground and see the rocket lying in the horizontal position as they're preparing to load those radio, radio, radiator grapple bars and the capsule and stack it all into the, to the rocket. So that was exciting to see it on the ground that I'll get to see it in space. Soon after that we'll also have an, an orbital uh, Cygnus vehicle arriving. The exact date's moving around a little bit, but not too long after the SpaceX, SpaceX vehicle departs, which will be the first. It's a demo demonstration flight for that program, um, so it'll be very exciting to be part of the robotic mission to grapple it and then be part of the uh, cargo team to help unload and load it. We also have uh, pretty much every vehicle that can fly. There's an opportunity for us to see, and that includes the uh, Japanese HTV, which will be arriving again in that same time frame, and as well as a, a European ATV, which docks in conjunction with the Russian docking system back on the um, aft end of the Russian segment. And then, of course, we have the Progress vehicles, which continue to fly on every expedition, really the workhorse of the cargo supply system uh, and, and, the space, and the Soyuz crafts themselves that bring us up and, and our crewmates. So, Really, really exciting and a lot of uh, moving vehicles and I'm glad I'm not on the planning team that has to coordinate all these hatches and, and, uh, and the constraints for which each vehicle needs because it's a challenging uh, uh, as well as the public-private partnerships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's fascinating to really see it all coming together because, you know, I, I've been only at NASA for eight years, but in that time, a lot has changed. We were heavy shuttle program going on when I first arrived, and then we lived, we kind of 
transitioned out of the, the shuttle program and, and, and then now the momentum is swinging to these other uh, um, commercial companies that are sending vehicles up and to see it all go from sort of discussions and meetings to now fruition will be a really special place for me to be. What are you most looking forward to about this flight? You know, as in anything with life, there's uh, exciting things that you experience. But really, the important thing is who you experience those things with. And um, on Earth, it's your family and your loved ones, your colleagues, your work, your work people that you know really well. And it's the same for us on the space station. I have really got to know my two Russian cosmonauts, Pavel and Sasha, uh, extremely well over these two and a half years. And I couldn't be happier to fly in space with, with both of them. It's really spe been special. And then um, I joke around and say, I never go to space without Tom Marshburn, because we flew <laughs> on 127 together. And, uh, and it'll be really nice to see him up there and give him a big hug when, when we arrive uh, and open the hatch. And Chris Hadfield, I think, is one of the greatest astronauts that we have. He's just so such a nice person and so talented um, technically. Um, he is a real mentor. And, and uh, to, to be in space with him, for me, is a real treat. And on the other side of things, um, Luca and Karen, to experience it with those, with them is equally special. Luca I've got to know tremendously well in this time, just like I have my two Russian crewmates. And Karen, um, on 127, she was the spouse of one of my crewmates, and she did all the activities with my family and the pre-launch activities. And now um, to be in space with her, and I'm so, I know her family very well, it, it'll be exciting. What is it that we are learning from these missions to the International Space Station, yours and the ones that have come before and the ones that are still to come? What are we learning here that you think is going to prepare us for human exploration of space beyond Earth orbit? You know, I think what we're learning is what we've probably already learned is going to space is hard work. And having it, pulling it off flawlessly is something that NASA and all the international partners do amazingly well. And uh, I think it's important to keep that in mind as all these missions come and go and things happen and, um, seemingly f perfect. But it's because of a lot of hard work and a lot of lessons learned and we continue to know that it's a very challenging environment that we work in. It's a very challenging tasks that tasks that we're solved that were that we're issued to solve. Um, and as we carry that mentality forward, that's what's going to get us to the next level of space space exploration. Is just keeping that in mind. You know, I can't tell you what specific things are going to be those items that get us to the next milestone. But it's this mentality that we have of, hey, it's difficult work. It's hazardous. We need to have the, the safety program and risk mitigation that we do. And then at some point, you have to make a key decision with risk versus reward trades. And, uh, and then just say, OK, it's time to go. Let's go do it.